Welcome to the Insider Report. I'm Chris Vancers here with Dave Brocious. We're here at the second day of the 2012 AMA Western Pro-Am, where we saw the open class today. The 450s were out. Well, you know, these were the big boys on the big toys, and we saw lap times drop, and the racetrack got rough, and there was, you know, some great racing out there. It's going to be close. These guys are going to have to race hard. Double points offered up by the AMA for that transfer to the uh, getting their license. But you know what? These guys came with a purpose. They came with a reason. Great racing here at ACP, without a doubt. Yeah, talking about those double points, uh, talking with a few of the riders, a few have plans for Supercross and Outdoors next year, so I'm sure those points really help towards that effort. Well, that, and they like being here in the sunny Arizona. You know, it was a little bit warm, but the racing was way hotter than the temperature. Well, let's go ahead and take a look at the racing highlights. Here we go, getting ready for the gate drop of Moto Number 1, and uh, out of Washington, Connor Elliott just rocketed out of the gate and held it on a little bit longer than everyone else. Yeah, Connor Elliott got a little insider information no pun intended there, as he uh, was told how to pick a gate here at ACP. And everybody backed off in the first turn. He just rocketed around him. He said that, uh, you know, he listened and he learned well. Yeah, he led a few laps. And uh, Cole Martinez, he was chasing him down. And uh, Elliot was keeping him honest. Yeah, and, and Martinez, though, was very confident in his skills and his bike handling. He said he really had to work hard on the 250, but the 450 is more at home. And he's just going to work his way around here, keep the man in track, set the pace, and not worry about what's going on behind him and concentrate on moving forward for sure. Probably a little bit easier than yesterday, especially uh, since he's on his own bike with his own suspension setup. Yeah, suspension setup yesterday was made for a guy that was about 40 pounds lighter and about six inches shorter. And with the power of the 450, probably helped uh, – get over a few things a little easier as well no doubt you know we had a really good mix of bikes out here though we had kawasaki's and honda's and yamaha's everybody was going at it so the brands were well represented for sure blake Lilly all of a sudden starts showing up in the picture here the, the red bike there with the uh, lucas oil on board uh, blake of course uh, wanted to redeem himself he wanted to get that number one spot in the overall today so he started working hard right from the beginning yeah the top four pretty much started at the top four blake was the only one who had to come up from behind and once he attached to uh got in the fifth he just started picking away and working his way up yeah it was great racing as you can see though the track started to get a little bit hammered some of our slower riders are, are, are already getting into a problem and getting into our back markers and martinez took advantage of that as uh, as Connor Elliott got off the pace, and Martinez is now running to the front and very comfortable lead. Just watched him ride. It was very smooth, and the bike seemed to be working pretty darn good here at ACP. Yeah, he pulled a gap and managed it well. It doesn't seem like he was pushing it, and he was probably just uh, marking second place and, and keeping the gap uh, up until the end. Well, that is for sure, you know, and... Uh, and like I said, Blake Lilly, though, he had a goal set, and that was to try and get up to the front. Martinez, though, is the man of the moment when it comes to moto number one. But uh, Lilly was in there, and you know what? Good racing, good times. On the FMF two-stroke challenge, it was a different day for DeFazio, but pretty much the same result. Same results, just on Sunday, brought the KTM two-stroke out there, the FMF on board, and I'll tell you what, Anthony DeFazio, the 17-year-old rider out of surprise, makes it look pretty easy. Takes a look over his shoulder there and gets a little idea of what gap he has, but I'll tell you what, the man out of Colorado, Nobles, is just trying to chase him down. Kept him honest for most of the race. That was the thing we did not see on Saturday, but Nobles gets his Yamaha going, and he goes, I'm on the chase for sure. Uh, second yesterday, a second today for a second overall for Nobles. So uh, not too bad uh, considering this is DeFazio's home track. Oh, it is definitely DeFazio's home track. And he knows every bump, every berm. He knows the dirt by personal name. There's no doubt about it. But uh, there's some great racing, even in the back of the pack there, chasing him down for that uh, third and fourth position. We saw some awesome racing here in the FMF two-stroke challenge. Yeah, pretty much went down to the last lap between Myers and Allen where uh, – Allen got by Myers for the uh, uh, third place, but uh, it was Myers that had the third overall. Well, you know, it was great for Myers, though, to get himself up on the podium for sure. He and Troy Allen, they were just getting as close. They were just inches away most of the time out on the racetrack there, particularly in the ending portion of the racetrack, and used up every line they could find without just, uh, well, they're a little bumping and running. Some brotherly love was given out here today at ACP. 
for all of DeFazio's efforts. He gets a nice-looking FMF two-stroke uh, trophy there that he can put up on his mantle. Yeah, that's a one-of-a-kind trophy, you know that, and uh, they did a great job. You're not watching a replay from Moto One. That is Connor Elliott again grabbing the hole shot over Cole Martinez. You know, Martinez looks like he's got it, but he doesn't got it because it's going to be Elliott once again. The Washington youngster came through there, held her wide open, but it was a double Kawasaki's taking the lead here right off the get go. Yeah, pretty much replay from Moto One where uh, it took a little bit for uh, Martinez to get around. Get around Connor, but once he did, he opened up a gap and started pulling away. Well, there's no doubt that uh, Connor had a good start, but the question is, is he going to have a good finish? Lily was the man on the move here. In fact, he had gotten his way up in a second, and all of a sudden, bam! That's where Van der Mortel uh, takes advantage and gets by for uh, what is now second place. Yeah, second place is going at it here, and of course, Martinez is still trying to pull out and pull away from everybody. Here, but Vander Mortel, as we can see there, he's coming through, and he's got the uh, Connor in front of him right now. But Martinez was just so smooth; everything looked like it was going to go perfect for the young man out of uh, Rim Rock, Arizona, in the Verde Valley. That's why they say "Let's go racing" because you never know what can happen. No, you got to race all the way through, and all of a sudden, life comes to an end for our early leader here in the second moto. You can see the rear wheel just coming apart. Actually, the sprocket sh shears off, and here comes the battle right now. That gave Van de Mortel the uh, lead while uh, Blake Lilly was trying to catch him and try and get that first moto win today. Yeah, Blake Lilly was on a move, but, you know, it was all about Van der Mortel there, the Yamaha. He did an excellent job. He actually pulled away from Lilly, but when it came down to the end, Blake Lilly was the man standing on the top of the box. He was your overall winner for the 2012 Pro-Am 450 class today. That was some great racing in the open class, but what we didn't see was the 250B class where Mark Worth made his debut yesterday with a pretty pretty good get-off, but today he rallied back for a 1-1. Boy, he did. He had a big step off yesterday, but, you know, he worked it out. He came back today. He went 1-1. Had a little competition there. We had one bike that broke down. Mr. Sloan's bike kind of gave up, but, you know, the 14-year-old out of the Verde Valley area did a fine job and uh, was able to take home a win on the big bike, and I think that's just uh, going to show you there's more to come in 2013 out of Mark Worth. And uh, bad luck Verde Valley with uh, Cole Martinez and his mishap with uh, leading the moto. Oh, it was. You know what? We saw him, you know, got the video of him going off the track, pushing the bike, broken hearted. He was just a few laps away from taking it overall. But you know what? Blake Lilly was in the right spot at the right time, and the rest of the guys followed him across. It was just great racing out there today. Uh, you know, Connor Elliott pulling two hole shots, picking up the AEO bull riding money from Saturday night where they raised, uh, well, enough money that he's going to get a little bit of uh, dinner with his uh, dinner for the winter and, uh, and, of course, some gas money along the way. And uh, it was great to see him do his job out there today. Well, all the riders get to thank their sponsors, and we get to do the same. We couldn't do the Insider Report without help from our sponsors. Well, that's true. We're always uh, Fox coming through for us. we got to appreciate the effort that Fox does. FMF was on board, as always, to find folks at Dunlop. Insider MX, of course. Auto Sensations, AEO, as we said, putting up the cash there for the, uh, the whole shot. Uh, we want to thank Racer X, Vital, Motorcycle USA, and uh, it's just a great day here for 2012, the final round here of the Pro-Am Series. Double points. We got some guys going to the big show. Yeah. Well, for Dave Brocious, I'm Chris Fancers, and we hope to see you at the 2013 AMA Western Pro-Am.